Fender style guitarist. And if you like to noodle around on the guitar, play with scales, improvise little melodies, that kind of thing, then I have a really, really fun finger style guitar challenge for you. This is one of my very favorite things to do on the guitar. I think of it as one of my desert island exercises. Like if you could only take one thing that you're allowed to practice to a desert island, what would it be? This, this would be near the top of my list for sure. The idea is very simple. It's that we just wanna keep a steady bass note going and that, that that our main goal is to just keep that going. It's like, it's a game. Don't step on the crack or you break your back or it's like lava monster. Like if that misses a beat, then you have to start over and you can time yourself or that kind of thing, make a game out of it, or just play around and make music out of it. This takes the idea of noodling to the next level. It, it makes real music out of it and it forces us to have a groove, have just a steady tempo, play in time, forces us to get some really amazing coordination going between our thumb and our fingers. And it allows us to hear the sound of a root below notes. So it's kind of like, I'm sure many of us are envious of piano players getting to play something in the left hand and something in the right hand and hear how they go together. Some very minimalistic version of that, um, but it is just so wonderful. There's so many things you can play around with it, even just playing low E on the bottom. And this guitar is tuned down a whole step right now, so this is a D, but I'm still thinking of it as, as E and I'm playing in E minor. So e, e minor pentatonic or blues. So I missed the bass note and that's the kind of thing while, and this is extra challenge for me because I'm talking while I'm doing it, which is a good challenge, but I'll sit and I'll just try to really focus on is that, is that never missing a beat? And to me, this is, it might be a little one dimensional that you're just playing on one string for now but it's real music. I could sit on, on the porch and just play this for... There's syncopation to it. I could just play it for hours. And if I do wanna mix it up a little bit, you can start moving chords around. For example, um, if I'm thinking of E and I'm playing, um, you know, playing around with E, I can actually go to keeping the, keeping the root note the same, the bass note, and going to A minor, and that's a wonderful way to play with this. So if I go to... So many things you can do with this. I like to play octaves. I'm using a lot of phrasing. Um, check out my phrasing playlist for training on that to make melodies sound like we're actually communicating something. But notice I'm really, I'm keeping this going no matter what. If I'm gonna mess up, I'm gonna try to mess up on the top, not on the bottom. Now, you can even move root notes, right? If I go to an A minor chord, and actually change the root, A minor, back to E. So it's a challenge, it's a game, it's so fun, it's real music, it's an exercise. Um, it's, it, it's so much more satisfying than what we usually think of as noodling, and it's just uh, fantastic uh, training for us. And if I ever wanna get the sound of a new scale or something, I can think, um, okay, well, I wanna do it over, over this kind of steady drone. So what if I want to play with E Phrygian dominant, which is the fifth mode of harmonic minor. So it really is just A harmonic minor with this, this note that I'm thinking of as E in the bottom. And then I could even go to, oh, I missed one. So it's like, I'm gonna start the whole thing over again. And again, I, sometimes I like to time myself and see how long how long can I keep it going? It's quite hard to even do it for a minute straight and try to play real music with it. Um, and I try to do it for five minutes. That's really, really challenging to do. So if this sounds cool, sounds appealing, if you like the sound of it and you wanna try it, but it feels a little far off, I'm like, how am I gonna just jump in and start playing with this? Because um, at first it'll, it'll just feel impossible. These, your fingers are gonna to wanna to Go together you're not going to be able to keep them separate and get that syncopation sound that sounds so good with it so i'm going to break down for you very simply 
the exact steps that I took and, and that I would recommend you take to start to get that coordination down. And, and just to share how I think um, in, in kind of a organized from the ground up kind of way. If I'm trying to get something new down that I think of as a cool idea and I don't know how to get there, I just break it down from the ground up super systematically or linear or organized. And, and that's why I tend to, to teach that way. So uh, very simply, and then I'll show you a couple really cool sounds you can get with it after after I show you the steps here. Um, but you're not going to be surprised by this once once I once I talk about it. You just want to keep this going, and then you want to think of every type of note duration, starting with whole notes. And you can you can do any organization of, of notes you want. But if we're just super thorough about it, we'll think: Can you play whole notes with this? And this is of course after mapping out the scale, right? So you could you could totally stop and say: I need to know the frets of whatever scale you're choosing. So in this case, E minor or E minor pentatonic or E natural minor, I'm just kind of playing around with those E minor blues. Check out my scales playlist for how to play any of those types of scales and how to work on them and map them out and know them really well and see them on the fretboard um, if you need help with that. Um, so obviously just mapping it out is, is really step kind of prerequisite. Can you see these notes? Do you know where they are on, on the fretboard? Okay, once you have that then, then you just start this steady. You don't have to use a metronome if you want to, if that's helpful, that's great. Um, but just can you play whole notes with it? We're thinking of these bass notes as quarter notes. Two, three, four. And you might think, well, it's pretty easy at that point. But I like to sit with that and just let it feel, let it, let it sink in. Let it feel kind of haunting. I feel like it's a movie soundtrack, you know? Every bit of this feels like real music to me as opposed to what we often think of as as noodling. So um, again, this makes me think of my tone a little more. Makes me think of a little bit of vibrato and stuff like that. Okay, so then you can do dotted half notes, which is every three. One, two, three, one, two. Or you can just jump to straight to half notes. You don't have to do the dotted if you don't want to. Okay, then every two, so half notes. Any notes you want. It doesn't even have to be in a scale. You're just working on coordination. You're just working on this amazing separation ability to keep one thing going. And try to hear it and track it in your mind as well, but just to get your hands to do these two separate things. It's like what a drummer has to do, kind of. Okay, that's every two, okay? So now I could do dotted quarter notes if I want, or you can go straight to quarter notes, but I like to do these dotted, boom, ba, and then have a rest. So a dotted quarter note is a quarter note and a half, and then I rest so it stays in 4-4. Four, four. So if you don't know what I mean, just mimic this rhythm, ba, which is on the beat, off the beat. One. So you see what we're doing? We are working from the ground up and saying, can we play every type of rhythmic duration consistently, constantly, just going with this right hand never stopping? Now that we did that dotted quarter note kind of syncopation rhythm, let's just do quarter notes straight up. It's not gonna feel that musical to do just everything with the bass note. And in fact, this might be what you start doing accidentally when you try to do the others, because we tend to just combine this is totally the, this whole exercise is like rubbing your tummy, patting your head, or whatever that thing is. Okay, so quarter notes, pretty straightforward. The next one I like to do is a dotted eighth note rhythm. Same thing as before, you just wanna get the on, off, on, off. This is very syncopated, hard to talk while I'm doing it, but boom, down. If you, if you think eighth notes, one and two and ba, ba, da, da. And so it just forces us to get different rhythms and keep this going. Each one is an exercise to sit with for a long time to make sure you can keep that going. Uh, then you can do eighth notes after that. And that's fun because you just want to play constant, da, da, da. Just even just nice and straight. Don't need to swing it necessarily. Do whatever sounds good to you. This is a great one for when you're actually improvising. Can you tie ideas together without having to stop 
because you ran out of places to play. I talk about that a lot in other lessons, just being able to play constant notes. Okay, after that you could do um, trip, if you want to do quarter note triplets, so that's three per beat. <laughs> Notice how all of it is, is such a coordination game. Like, is this going, and you can just work on the, uh, just the rhythmic durations on one note too. I know I'm moving around a ton, but you could go and slow it down when you want to and need to. I use the quarter note triplets in the beginning with this harmonics thing. In the intro of the lesson. Da, 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 da. And the final and fastest rhythmic duration that we're gonna play on the top is 16th notes. That's four melody notes per bass note. And just try to play constant and keep it going. You can, you can slow it way down for this. You can stay on a note and try to start moving around when you're ready. So I hope you see how organized that approach is. When I started doing this, it was about 10 years ago, just kind of wanting to like get that coordination down, just work on my finger style guitar chops and, and independence. And I kind of stumbled into just how amazing this feels to kind of m modally jam on a drone like that. Um, and I've been kind of slowly working on it ever since, but I went about it exactly in this way. Like, oh, well, if I can, technically, if I can play every type of rhythmic duration, uh, just exclusively with this, well then I should be able to just start piecing ideas together and play with phrasing and play whatever feels good and make melodies on top because I have done every type of duration um, at some point with the exercises. So now you're ready to, after you can do a little bit of any of those, just to some degree, and ideally with each of those, just like you're, if you're going through a method book or something like that, can you do each of them for, you know, in some kind of defined way? Like maybe you want to say, can I play up and down a scale form with it without messing up or can I do it for 30 seconds straight or a minute straight or whatever you want to define for yourself just so you can say I, I passed this level and I could do it s at least a little bit with each of those rhythmic durations now you can try to just play around and improvise and of course you can always jump in and try to improvise but the problem is it's just going to be frustrating it's going to make us feel like we can't do it and it's not for us because we don't have what it takes or we don't know how to get there so I Breaking it down like that really does get the, get us there. It's still going to be hard to improvise something. It's going to be tricky, but not because you can't play eighth notes, not because you can't play dotted chord notes, not because you can't do some sort of syncopated rhythm, because you've done all those. So your hands are ready. Now you can try to get musical. Okay, now let me show you a couple really cool things, cool sounds that you can get out of this once you get a slightly the hang of it. And you can start trying to play with these right away. One of them is playing, having the top note articulate with um, your B string, your second string. Very kind of cool bluesy sound. And on that same idea, you can do along the third string. So if you're playing with an E minor scale along the third string, and you just take these three fingers and play the top three strings. Love this sound. Okay, uh, you can do the same idea with the fourth string. Now I'm just playing strings four, three, Two. Just some kind of cool chord stuff. Um, I like to play octaves with this. If you want to get started with octaves, I have, I have a video about how to get started with octaves coming up soon, so make sure you're staying tuned and subscribed. Oh, I missed the bass now, so. <laughs> Game over, start over. And then like I mentioned a little bit at the beginning, you can start to try to play around with other harmonies. You know, move
move to the A bass note, play with A minor, and go back. And then it's you're playing a chord progression. I love how minimal it is. note again. If you want to work on some more solo guitar stuff, then definitely download my free solo guitar arrangement pack. There's tabs and standard sheet music of several tunes that are arranged for solo guitar. There's Autumn Leaves is in there, Fly Me to the Moon is in there, a few other tunes, and I'll be adding more music to it in the future. So if you get it, I will send you an update when I add more music to it. That's totally free solo guitar arrangement pack. There is a link in the top of the description to grab that, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon. If you're totally new to fingerstyle guitar and like a finger picking guitar and you want to get some of the foundations of finger picking guitar technique and fingerstyle guitar technique then definitely check out my video on the top four finger picking guitar patterns that's a great way to get started if playing finger picking patterns is totally new to you that video will help you out there'll be a link in the top of the links mentioned section in the description or you can click on the link that is on the screen here right now if you're watching on youtube i'm jared borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com i post a new lesson video every single week next week's lesson is on 10 different scales you can use to improvise and play over dominant seventh chords it's going to be a fun lesson i hope to see you there thanks so much for watching take care and happy practicing